quality workflow is used to define the correct process to follow during the entire quality testing process. Workflow is defined initially against a quality plan. In this example, we must first test the item and then if the item passes we release this quality test. If it fails we want to immediately initiate a scrap process. So the first thing we do is define the test workflow item. So we give it a meaningful name and description and we want the status to be in process so that when a test is created the workflow item is initiated immediately. The type of workflow item that we've got for a test is in process and we can define different priorities to this test workflow. The start date and due date for workflow items can be calculated based on when trigger events occur and we can define offsets that allow us to define whether a due date is, is due one or two days from starting. Each workflow should have an owner and assigned to this is so that that particular person that it's been assigned to will have this item in their activity list which I will cover off shortly. A workflow covers off different paths and in the case of a quality test that's either passing a test or failing a test and in this workflow item on completion or on passing a test we want to release the item and release the test as everything has passed OK. However if an item fails we have defined that we want to scrap this item. It is, is of no use and therefore we must uh, write it off. So on the deferred part of the workflow item we choose an item disposition and we choose a successor workflow step which I'll cover off next. For quality we have a number of dispositions. Typically if the test passes we will release the item. Otherwise we have the options of quarantine, set the item to one side, rework so if it's a manufactured item we can send it back into the manufacturing process to be reprocessed and corrected or we can scrap the item thereby writing it off. The disposition for a failed test in this case is scrap and we want to set the status to pending which means it has not been initiated yet. With workflow if the test fails it will update this particular workflow item to in process which will force it to be appearing on the specific users activity list. The workflow type is defined as scrap and we use that to update the quality test um, and define what its particular disposition is. And as with the previous item, we can define start dates, due dates, and offsets. We also want to define who is responsible so that they get notified appropriately. In this particular case, because it's a scrap disposition, once the uh, workflow item is complete, whether successfully or unsuccessfully, the item will remain in scrap status. So workflow can build up to quite a complex picture. As an example, we could start with a test. Uh, if the item fails that test, we could send it back to rework. 
Upon successful rework, we can send it to be retested as a third workflow item. And if it fails a second time, we can then send it to be quarantined or scrapped. So you can see from that example, we can build up quite complex and comprehensive work mechanisms around quality testing. When a test is created, a quality test, when a quality test is created from the quality plan, the workflow that has been set up on that quality plan gets copied through to the test document. So in this particular test document, we can see that the testing step is in process and should that test fail, the item scrap will become in process and that will become the new activity blah blah. When a quality test is generated from a quality plan, the workflow steps that we have identified on that quality plan are copied through to the quality test. By setting the test step as in process, when the quality test is generated, it immediately creates a new workflow item for testing and identifies the person responsible. The person responsible can see their list of actions required on the activities part of the mobile client. This section collects all required activities against that person together so they can see all of the things that are required to achieve. In the case of a test workflow step, selecting the test activity takes you into the test document. And as you can see from the test document, the workflow from that plan has been copied through and we are currently required to be completing the quality test. Should that test fail, then the scrap item will be immediately kicked into life. So we can show that happening by failing a particular test item. So by ta failing a test item, you can see that we have caused the entire test to fail. And you can see that the test step has now gone into deferred or failed status, which has immediately caused the scrap item to become available. By refreshing our activity list, we can see that instead of a test being required, the person responsible for undertaking the scrap has an item for scrap. One of the major benefits of workflow is that these activity lists take you into the required transaction directly. So because this is a scrap workflow item, by selecting this item, it takes me into the scrap transaction and passes in the required parameters such as the item being tested so that we can now define how many of these items need to be scrapped. The same process works for other dispositions such as quarantine and for quality rework.